I am so knowledgeable of Power Rangers. We've got Zack, Kelly, Lisa, Slater, Screech, and Jesse. And over here is Principal Belding. It's alright, cause I'm saved by the... I'm Anthonix Maximus, bitching to you about movies because my friend won't have fun with me on my bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just heard what I said. All right, this is our life now. There's no going back. Now that we're halfway through 2019, there is only one thing to think about. Power Rangers. Yes, as you know, this ridiculous show had a huge impact on my childhood. Yeah, sure, there were other shows like Batman the Animated Series, Animaniacs, Doug, Rugrats, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, He-Man, G.I. Joe, and the list goes on and on. But the one show that made the biggest impression on my life, I would have to say, as far as my creativity goes, would be... Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which would eventually drop off the whole Mighty Morphin thing and become Power Rangers. Honestly, I don't know why. On paper, it sounds ridiculous. You have a huge giant floating head recruiting teenagers to operate giant robots to fight monsters sent to them by a witch on the moon. And that kind of silliness is probably why I like it so much. For better or for worse very worse in some seasons. So why review Power Rangers anything right at this point? Well, simple, stupid. Power Rangers have recently been bought by Hasbro, the people behind Transformers and G.I. Joe, and all the good properties, not so much the movies, but the good toy properties. March was the premiere of Power Rangers Beast Morphers. Not a bad series, still has that Nickelodeon vibe, but so far it's washing that awful taste of the neo Bon era right out of our mouths. The Neo Saban era was when Hayam Saban bought the property back from Disney so it can produce more shows being done through Nickelodeon and the seasons were not that great. This included Power Rangers Samurai all the way to Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel. Basically all those seasons are being handled by the childish sanitation of Nickelodeon. We did get that awesome Power Rangers movie during this era. You know, the one starring the Urban Outfitters catalog models and 20 years exactly before this remake was Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. While Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie stood outside of the continuity of the series, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie actually functioned as a glorified TV pilot on a big screen for Power Rangers Turbo. Now before we get into Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, I must warn you of a couple things. One, I will not compare this to the Japanese Sentai series Car Ranger. I won't do that for any Power Rangers series because the focus is on Power Rangers and the American Power Rangers series is what I was introduced to. Not that I have a problem with Sentai, it's just different worlds of what impacted onto me. And two, in order to talk about this movie, that means I'm going to have to talk about the previous Power Rangers seasons and the following Power Rangers Turbo season as well and make comparisons. So let's get into this. It's morphing time. Why are you so clean shaven in the morph? Look, if the original series can use stock footage, so can I. Duh. If that's a Turbo or Power Rangers movie, why don't you say shift into Turbo? Because I don't own the Turbo Morpher. Oh, you got you there. On a distant planet lives a great wizard named Larigo. He is the keeper of a golden key which unlocks the dimensional gateways of the universe. Okay, even though this movie has nothing to do with the first one, it still uses the same framing device of the spoken word crawl, but this time it's said by a very bored Zordon. Okay, I'm just gonna skip over this because Zordon is literally explaining what's happening in the movie. We're gonna see this in a few scenes. Ah, space horses. Hayam Saban loves space horses. Surrender to Divatox! Ugh, forgot about him. This laboratory made love child of Gwildor and Alvin happens to be Larigo. He's a wizard. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Down the stream. 
Rounder, I hear edges. Down the street. <laughs> You're off key. Merrily, merrily. <laughs> Make that song your own. <laughs> you don't sound like you've ever been on a boat in your life. And here we are with Cat and Tanya on the bus with some kids. Oh, you don't know who Cat and Tanya are? <laughs> You probably should have watched the series while well, you were all going out and having fun and having a social life. I stayed inside and gained all the knowledge of Power Rangers. <laughs> Don't you feel like a loser? Do you want to talk about it? There's nothing to talk about. Another Power Rangers movie with a preteen bastard. Because, you know, we didn't suffer enough with Fred Kelman from the first movie. It's common knowledge that you hate children. Tommy and Rocky practice for the big competition. Maybe we're not trying hard enough. And now we are introduced to the movie's villain, Cleavage. I mean, Divatox. Which makes this all your fault. Divatox is the villain here and on the show itself. Now, she wasn't really meant to be a reoccurring villain. Just kind of a one-shot deal. After Lord Zed and Rita had defeated the Machine Empire, they were meant to come back and be the main bad guys. But along the way, producers decided to make Divatox the main villain. Though I didn't really have a problem with Divatox as a villain, just the idea of her was a bit off. She's a space pirate. A unique idea. But here's the thing. Pirates live off the grid. They pillage. They plunder. They steal boats from Tom Hanks. But their ultimate goal is not to rule the universe. Hey, there's Larigo now. I guess the movie's over. Of course. Zordon? Zordon, where are you? I'm here, Alpha. Okay, I need to address this. In the mythos, Goldar and Rito Revolto used a bomb to destroy the command center. Are you with me so far? However, the Power Rangers got their Zeo powers from the Zeo crystals that they've been collecting, and there was a power chamber beneath the old command center. All right, it's a bit of a doozy now. At the end of Power Rangers Zeo, their powers were still intact along with their new command base. And yet, the movie shows a new power chamber and a new design for Alpha 5. There's no explanation whatsoever. Now, when I first saw the movie, I just assumed, okay, you know what, maybe this is just a aesthetic look for the big screen. You know, sometimes they make little changes for the big screen that doesn't stick with the series. You know, something to differentiate the movie from the show. But no, all the designs carried on to Power Rangers Turbo. Bullshit. Bullshit. Sorry, my rant took over. Something must be terribly wrong. You must pinpoint his location, then contact the Rangers. Why would Justin hide? Oh, right, because the script says plot convenience time. Got your card. And a uh, sub decoration. <laughs> <laughs> Kill me now. Did you just hear all that? You guys are the Power Rangers? Well, Justin, I'm afraid you've seen too much. Rangers, the short-range locators in your power boxes should lead you straight to Larigo. Good luck. Ready? Let's go. And now we pad this movie's runtime with a side quest. Larigo holds the only key to free Malagor, the Great Flame of Destruction, and my husband to be. Oh. Once we are wed, I will use his powers to raid all the riches of the universe. Ooh, thinking about it just gives me goosebumps. See, we didn't need Zordon reading anything. Diva Talks just told us her wedding plans in one brief moment.
I needn't remind you of our luck in getting rehired. <laughs> Another continuity BS. At the end of Power Rangers Zeo, Bulk and Skull left their private eye job and Detective Stone when they were offered a job in France. Did the job not pan out? Did some monster destroy France? Sure, behind the scenes in production, the actors playing Bulk and Skull were offered a spin-off series, and that's why their characters exited out of this show. But it didn't seem to work out. You know, they could have at least gave us some kind of insight of what happened. You no, know, just to help us out in this world that they established. Wow. Reminds me of parts of Australia. Yes, Catherine. You're from Australia. We get it. And I suppose filming in Australia is cheaper than filming in Africa. Don't move. Quiet. Something's about to happen in this movie. <laughs> yes, we finally get a Power Rangers Zeo morph. Never mind. And are these my two humans of purity and strength? Yeah, check them out. I even scrambled their brains so they'd be easier to deal with. Ta-da! I'd complain about them capturing the wrong sacrifices and making the screen time go longer, but at least Bulk and Skull gets more screen time in this film than they did in the last one. We're here to take you to Alpha. Oh. Good, let's move this film along. Remove the mind block. We'll use his wife Kiara to contact them both. Bring him to me. Oh, and by the way, as a token of my appreciation, I'll spare a couple of your favorite human. Power Rangers. Kimberly. For all of them. Ooh, this will be interesting. After moving to pursue her gymnastics career, Kimberly had broken up with Tommy by a Dear John letter. Though I don't see how a long distance relationship for a Power Ranger would be difficult. They can teleport to each other. She clearly must have not loved him that much if it was easy for her to find someone else. And yeah, I know, Zordon's rule about being a Power Ranger is not using your powers for personal gain, but I'm pretty sure he would have overlooked the fact that Tommy could teleport to her here and there. After all, Zordon uses teenagers for free labor anyways. Well, teenagers. Wait, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was reviewing a movie. Anyway, with Kimberly back in Tommy's life, there might be some unresolved relationship closure for once and for all. Okay, maybe things are fine because Tommy is with Catherine now, but you know what? Maybe I needed that closure. You ever think of that? Kim? Yeah? I think we're in major trouble here. I'd say. Wish we could morph. Me too, Kimberly. Me too. Divatox plans to use Larigo and his golden key to pass through the treacherous Nemesis Triangle into another dimension and attempt to join forces with an evil creature named Malagor. Stop spoiling the movie, you big-headed bastard! You're just repeating the narration from the opening. Look, there they are. Die. All right! You have what you came for! Let him frisk go! Swim, Blam! Come on! Come on! Come on, Blam! They tricked us! What? Betrayed? Wow. Imagine if you actually morphed before showing up. Then again, I guess I am asking for logic in a show where a city is under constant attack and nobody moves. The Zord you are now creating will possess the power to carry you safely on your quest through the Nemesis Triangle to rescue Larigo, his family, and our friends. Behold your new Turbo Zords. It was the late 90s. Cars were popular at the time with the rise of the popularity of NASCAR for some reason. There was also a Knight Rider spinoff called Team Knight Rider. This has to be the only reason why Saban decided to adapt Car Ranger as a Power Rangers series. Keeping in mind that Car Ranger is more or less a parody of all the previous Sentais in Japan. <laughs> Rad, dude. They got their turbo powers from a giant Simon Says game. It was addressed in Power Rangers Zeo that their powers could never be destroyed, but only get stronger. 
Again, I know Saban only has so much stock footage for Power Rangers Zeo. In fact, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers went on three seasons combining different stock footage from different seasons of the Sentai series. I get that. For continuity purposes, getting turbo powers just makes no sense. Apparently, there's a longer script of this movie that explained what happened to their powers, and I will get into that later. But ultimately, they did have to cut scenes for a shorter time. Almost 40 minutes into this film, and I can think of many scenes that could have been cut by now. Anyways, let's watch as teenagers use a Simon Says game to get new powers so they can fight space pirates with cars. Think I found it. Okay. I love the Power Rangers to death. Tis true. And with this love, you have to occasionally deal with some stupid shit. I mean, their new Zords are cars that are going to get parked in a ship so they can follow a space submarine to an island. Wow, imagine if they could, I don't know, teleport there. But yeah, after this, Power Rangers stopped teleporting. Oh look, Rocky's okay and he's gonna join them. Or maybe Billy is back. I'm kidding. Billy's too gay and he's not allowed to join a rainbowed colored team of superheroes. No, that is insane. I will burn this place to the ground. What are you talking about? Guys, I'm the new Blue Ranger. <sighs> Fuck! <laughs> So Justin is now the Blue Ranger and Fuck! Ultrazord! Say, who's watching where we're going? Huh? Not me, I'm not. Uh-oh! Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, too hot to handle. It's like they watched my very first review, which was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, a movie, and they saw me bitch about a preteen boy hanging out with the Power Rangers. So they decided to piss me off even further and make him part of the Power Rangers. Not the same boy, but still a preteen boy. What the hell? And the cells, they're all racing by themselves. All right, remember how in the last movie we had Red Hot Chili Peppers, Devo, Van Halen, and they might be giants? <laughs> well, step aside, rockers, because this movie has... Help for the world! Help for the world! Now, if it was me, I would have used this song. Here I go again! Diva talks crapped in the water. That's what I get for lowering myself to potty humor. <laughs> you just save that kind of nonsense for Power Rangers Ninja Steel. Once well, so we get to Maranthius, the sub's gonna start to climb. Once we hit 100 feet, we pop this off the wall and then boom. And make it up in one breath. It's our only chance. As Jason Kimberly planned to escape, Divatox uses the baby to force Largo to get them through the Nemesis Triangle. Okay, ready? Now! A Marine, a cop, a firefighter, a mall security guard. Zordon could have used anyone to be the next Blue Ranger. Oh. Helping Kimberly Bulk and Skull escape, Jason left himself to be the only sacrifice for Malagor. And that is why Jason is a real leader. He made sure the others escaped before himself. I'm glad I met Austin St. John at Comic-Con and Rocky actor Steven Cardenas. Hey, what's up? It's uh, Steve Cardenas, aka the Red Power Ranger at New York Comic-Con with Jeff right here. And uh... 
thought my name was Jeff. And yes, I met Jason David Frank as well. But when I asked him about his ass whooping from Steve Urkel, that's when he headbutt me. I need your advice. How do I get rid of the Power Rangers? What? The Power Rangers? <laughs> if I knew that, do you think I'd be lying here listening to this? After spending a whole season trying to reclaim their throne from the Machine Empire, Lord Zed and Rita decided to sit back from their plans of world domination. Now, if the fan theory is true, this might have been the time Lord Zed and Rita were giving birth to this. And thanks to this movie, we now know Lord Zen and Rita sleep together. Ew. That's a butt for all you bored parents out there. Good. Keep a contact. We'll get the other vehicles rolling. So the cars do drive on water. So I guess the ship was unnecessary. Two torpedoes are armed and ready. Fire one and two. Oh no, the ship blew up. The Power Rangers are dead. That means Power Rangers Turbo is going to be really awkward with Adam hanging out with a crippled Rocky. Ah, looks like we all got through. All right. So what do you think, Justin? Well, can we do that again? Do what? Drive through fire? You know what? Go hang out with the Beetleborgs. Shift to the Turbo. Uh, yeah. Okay, that was funny. Mountain Blaster, turbo power! Rangers finally suit up and get ready to fight. I never want to hear anyone bitch about the lack of suit time in the 2017 Power Rangers movie again. I like it. Love it, I love it. Oh, the steaming skulls. In all fairness, the set is pretty sweet. What's the matter, all choked up? The quality of this all out brawl is pretty spectacular. Okay, I thought Kimberly and Jason were going to be the sacrifices for Malagor, but I guess the pit decided to possess them? Kimberly, no! Huh? No. Look at me, Kim. Oh my god, the Red Ranger is Tommy Oliver all along. Oh wait, we already knew that. No! no! Wait! No! Oh yeah, and sweetie, Pink is out. <laughs> Catherine got kicked by Kimberly. Now that is a cat fight. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do it! Do it! Malagor's power will exceed throw in the fire! No! no! This one is mine! Why do I have this feeling that this fight wasn't in the script, but instead Austin St. John wanted to choke the life out of Jason David Frank? <gasps> That easy, huh? Maybe use it on Diva Talks? Maybe not be an inconvenience next time? No, I'm the one with the muscles and the power! No! Yeah, that's right, Chase. But you're not using your brain power. No! Humans are turning pure again! No! No, we don't have a sacrifice! Oh, but we do, dear nephew. Mm -hmm. He'll be fine. She wants to marry him? That's a pretty impressive design for a monster. I imagine it must have been really expensive. In fact, I would imagine they would like to get their money's worth and recycle the suit for an overarching villain in the future. We know where I'm going with this. There you go. Everyone, out the way we came! Oh. 
truth be told, I'm more of a climatic fight at night type of guy, but this is fine. I guess there wouldn't be enough lights to show it nicely. In this movie's defense, it was probably the best idea to have people dressed up as Zord and a monster, instead of subjecting us to awful CGI that we got in the first movie. When this You might think I'm just rushing these clips, but no. The fight actually ends as quickly as it begins. So much for the build-up for this monster. The plastic surgery. I didn't even get a lot of You still wanted that, huh? Rygod, the Power Rangers will pay for this one day. Funny she should say that. Hey guys! Yeah. How about a lift? Alright, here Let's we go. go. Ooh. The 80s are alive, and we end this movie with a competition. Point. I'm sorry. It's cool that Justin's Youth Center gets saved, but what about the other team? I mean, after all, the other team's neighborhood is probably going to get bought out. Many families will go homeless, but at least Justin will have a place to play ping pong. Hey, look, they didn't cut Ernie out of this movie this time. <laughs> And there you have it, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. What did I think of it? It's not that great, but you know, it has its charm. As I said, apparently there was a much longer script to this movie that would have expanded three hours. Apparently there was a scene where Divatox destroyed the Zeozords, which explained why the Power Rangers needed their turbo powers. Oddly enough, there was also a mermaid in the film named Mendika actually serve as a guide for the ship to follow to the island, and she would also be a potential love interest for Adam. Speaking of love interest, there was a rumor that Kimberly and Jason were written as a couple. I mean, can you imagine the possibilities, the conflicts just from Tommy alone? And I actually choose to believe this rumor only because if you look at some of the scenes between Jason and Kimberly, it's almost like Jason was looking at Kimberly with loving eyes, like more than he would for the rest of the team. Almost like he was more concerned for her than anything else. And sadly, there was no David Yost in this film because well, years of homophobia on set. Had David Yost stayed on the show, he would have been in this movie, and it would have explained that Billy was going to modify the Zeo powers to become Turbo. Not necessarily implying that Zeo was going to be destroyed, but it was just going to evolve to Turbo powers. Which is more satisfying than just seeing the Pink Ranger get defeated by water. And, and by the by, Saban, it's a real shame you actually allowed homophobia on a set, and you said nothing. You just allowed it. And yet, you would later cast future rangers who have appeared in gay-themed movies and gay-themed TV shows like Queer as Folk. Very hypocritical. I am so glad Hasbro owns your franchise now. This movie was thrown together at the last minute, but it's not the worst thing from Power Rangers. People say Power Rangers Turbo is terrible. Yeah, it's really not that bad. It had some great contributions. The show did have some really wild turns, like switching up Divatox actresses, making the first half of the season about defusing bombs, replacing Zordon with Demetria, who only spoke in questions, and was hinted at being Divatox's long-lost sister, but that plot was dropped, replacing the entire team of Power Rangers out of nowhere. Saban didn't even tell the cast that they were going to be replaced until they received the script. Some people hated Diva Talks played by Hilary Shepard Turner, but I enjoyed her. She is a fun diva of a villain, and her interactions with Rita Repulsa, another diva villain, it's one of Power Rangers' greatest moments. I mean, Diva Talks sacrificed her own nephew to gain her own goal, and at the end of the film, she said she would have her revenge, and you know what? She actually does. She's the one that blows up the power chamber at the end of Power Rangers Turbo, which forced the Rangers to go into space, and we had a very popular ending to the series, Power Rangers in Space, where eventually everyone who was bad or turned good or just turned into dust. I'm sorry for going on a rant about Power Rangers. As you can tell, 
it is one of my favorite franchises ever since I was a kid, even up until now. It's stupid, it's ridiculous, it's nonsensical, but you know what? It's given me a lot of creativity over the years and crazy out of this world imagination. So for a franchise to affect me like that, I'll defend it all the way through. And that is why I chose Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie to be my very first review. Of course, back then I learned a valuable lesson that I should actually write my scripts instead of making it improv. And that review was the reason why Vincent is in a coma. Thanks for getting up in time so you can review this movie with me, buddy. But anyways, here I am reviewing the sequel to the very first review I've ever done. Vincent, buddy, let's wrap this up and think about some more reviews. You're simply irresistible. It's morphing time. What the hell?